Okay, before we continue, I just want to clarify something. I did go back and get the missing soul, so I'll put that in the video for the souls if you want to see it. Otherwise, uh, everything else should be the same. The following day at Cujo Mansion. That's the cat. Hello. Eita Nakamatsu here. Oh, hi. Thanks for your help last night. What do you want? Actually, Miss Yasuoko called me this morning to tell me something. The departed figure is getting darker and darker each day. You should back away from this now. Oh. Coming from a spiritualist like Yasuoka, those words would carry some serious weight. No wonder he's scared. Eita's information has really been a great help, but... With all the people we've lost on this case, there's just no way I can try and talk him into risking his life to help me out. I got it. You were a great help. Thanks for all the work you did for me. Oh. I'll get back to teaching you how to work a computer once this case is all done. We'll start with internet use. That'll be something nice for you to look forward to, Light. Yeah, thanks. This is fine. Chapter 6, The Departed's Wrath. So I believe this is another micro chapter like chapter 4, and then we have our finale in 7. So yes, Kokuri was the final spirit. I leave the mansion head to Konohara Academy. I have to report last night's events to Mr. Konoe. I enter the special building and walk around the inf I walk toward the infirmary. As usual, there's nobody inside. I better go to the faculty room. Mr. Konoe is waiting for me. There's no one in the infirmary. The notification light on my phone is blinking. Looks like I've got voicemail. I press the button to play the audio. Simple, man, it's me. Uh, you see. Fuck, words ain't coming out. I've got a shit ton of things I want to say to you, you know? Oh well, I'll just spit out what's in my head. Do you know why I've been laying low all this time? It's because of Mashida. He said he'd call the school and my mom if I stuck my nose in. Damn it, this is so unfair. But you know what he said that time? If me and Light go down, you're the relief pitcher left to come in and close this thing out. So you better not go and do something stupid like betray my trust, Nagashima. For some reason, I feel like I got duped by his words. Like, he put me in a situation where I gotta be hanging around just in case, you know? It means I can't just do as I please. Though I'm pretty sure my turn won't come around. Because no spirit's ever gonna win against both of you. Guess that's all I wanted to say then. Give my regards to him. And that's the end of the voicemail. So it goes without saying that will only be there. She intentionally left them. Bag enhancement, I think, is the only thing I can get. Four for the chapter. So yeah, you only get that message if he's alive. So yeah, I have a feeling we're not going to see any new areas from here. Since afternoon classes are still in session, the faculty room looks emptier than usual. Mr. Konoe, who's sitting in the back of the room, notices my arrival. You're here, Light. His voice sounds weak, and for some reason his complexion doesn't look so good. Are you alright? I assume you're inquiring about my physical condition? No, I am not well. I've been feeling lethargic and sluggish all morning. Perhaps it's the ravages of stress taking a toll on my body. But that's enough about me. I heard you received a notice yesterday. How'd the investigation go? I give him a detailed report about Mr. Kokiri's case from beginning to end. The sour expression on his face as he listens to me recounting the events of last night tells me all I need to know. Goodness gracious. First Izumi, then Horikoshi, now Kakuta. Three students have gone missing under my watch. And yet again, you failed to protect the targeted student. Oh my, can't even find the words to justify your poor performance? I suppose it's better than forcing me to listen to your pitiful excuses, though. Mr. Konoe, you can fire me if you like. But how would you stop the departed, then? Ah. Mr. Konoe falls silent at my words. You're right. 
No matter how many valid complaints I have, it doesn't change the fact that you're the only hope I have of rectifying this situation. I let out an overly exaggerated sigh. I understand the situation he's in, plus what else can I do other than threaten him to stop bothering me? However, one more victim and you'll be dismissed. Sakamoto has backed me into a corner. She's suspicious of you, especially in regards to Doryo and Kinukawa. But she's misunderstanding the situation. Your last chance, understood? Yeah. Good. It's all for me, then. Don't let me down, Light. I leave the faculty room feeling Mr. Konoe still staring daggers into my back. Honestly, I couldn't care less if Mr. Konoe and Sakamoto suspect me. But if I get kicked off campus, I won't be able to investigate, and I know I'm the only one who can pursue the departed and bring this to an end. I can't afford to make any more mistakes. A chime sounds over the speakers. Looks like class is over already. What do I do now? I really want to start doing some investigating, but I have no idea where to start. The Departed, who is still hiding at Konohara Academy, is playing their cards well. There don't seem to be any clues left. If I have to pick one spot that still has some ties to them, the Clock Tower seems like the prime spot. During summer vacation, Doryu and Michio saw the female doll in the red dress there. At that moment, their bodies were afflicted with a curse. If the Departed was the one who caused it, then that tower is probably connected with them. There might be something in there. Maybe I can get some more info if I talk to her. Should I go visit her? Doryu is standing near the window when I enter the student council room. She notices my presence right away and turns to me. So you're here today. I heard about Kakuta from Michiho. Yeah, it was really unfortunate. Say, Doryo, there's something I want to ask about the clock tower. That reminds me, I haven't told you about it yet. About what? I actually went to the clock tower during lunch break yesterday. What? You shouldn't be taking risks like that. Spirits don't show up during the day, so it's fine. I didn't go inside, though. The door wouldn't open. That's weird. Did someone lock it? That's unlikely. The key to the clock tower is missing. Nobody's able to enter the clock tower right now. But it was open that night. Was that the Departed's doing? Probably. Looks like I can't investigate the clock tower just yet. About that clock tower. One time the clock tower doll I saw made the school newspaper. I was skimming through the school's old newspapers this morning hoping to get information about the Departed. And then I found an article about a female doll. Mr. Konoe told me the school's historical records were lost due to war damage, but for it to have been buried in the school newspaper archives. Aren't you squeamish when it comes to horror stories and the likes? What made you do that? Oh, um, I just wanted to be of some help. Wow, what a blush. You're just seeing things. Oh, really? Can you tell me details of that rumor? Yes. There was a rumor going around Konohara Academy. Sixty years ago, the first headmaster built a clock tower to commemorate the school's 10th anniversary. A stylish stone clock tower that stood tall in the remote countryside of Konohara. Many students were wondering what the inside of the clock tower was like. Overcome with curiosity, some eventually snuck into the tower. What they saw inside the tower was... the first headmaster's collection. There were a lot of antique things, but the item that caught the attention of the most people was... a doll wearing a red wedding dress that lay on a stone altar. Rumors of the doll spread in no time because everyone was interested in its origin. However, the first headmaster had already passed away by that time, so he was unable to answer those burning questions. With nobody to tell the truth, wild speculation regarding the doll ran unchecked. The first headmaster, who had always been fond of antique goods, had bought that doll from a European family. It's a cursed doll that was modeled after young girls who became sacrifices. The first headmaster had a craftsman make the doll to enshrine the deities of Konohara. It's a doll made to calm the soul of a student who lost their fiancé and committed suicide. No definitive answer was ever found because there wasn't anyone around who knew the truth. In the end, everyone forgot about the doll in the clock tower once the war broke out. And that was the rumor featured in the school's newspaper. It's truly an interesting story, but... 
The rumor has so many variations regarding the origin of the doll. Which one is the truth, if any? Right, let me confirm one thing. Are there any rumors about the doll moving? No, none at all. Okay. There are people who have seen the female doll, but not when she's moving. Guess I'm the only one who's witnessed it. I've got to go soon. Thanks, Dorio. I hope that information can help you in some way. I have to head out as well. The teachers told us not to stay at school. I say goodbye to Dorio and leave the student council room. So we have yet another typo. I think we're only getting like one per chapter, which isn't that bad. So we got the rumor. The rumors of the clock tower involve a doll in a red wedding dress that is placed on an altar inside. However, no one knows its origins. It's the same doll that shows up everywhere I go. I need to find out if the doll and the departed are related, in addition to a way to enter the clock tower itself. When I step into the library, I find a girl whose appearance clashes with the place. Sup? Kaku didn't come to school today. You know anything about it? Sorry, no idea. There's no way I can tell Maruhashi about Kakuta's death. What are you doing here? I'm just chilling here, got no place to go. Not after I learned how terrifying that corridor was. Then you should just go home. Didn't the teachers tell you not to hang out here after class? Who knows, maybe something weird will happen to you again. Stop acting like a teacher and don't freak me out like that. I was about to go home anyway, my body just feels really heavy somehow today. Are you going to stay until night again? If you do, be careful, I have a bad feeling. I say goodbye to Maruhashi and leave the library. When I enter the faculty room for a second time, I see Sakamoto inside. Still plaguing in our school, are you, Mr. Light? I asked Mr. Konoe to do away with you, though. Oh, don't worry, he heard you. He told me that I'll be dismissed if I make another mistake. That Konoe is far too lenient. If an incident occurs, it'll be too late. We need to deal with this problem quickly. By problem, are you referring to? The Departed Investigation. That is certainly a problem, though I'm more worried about Dorio and Kinukawa. I don't know what kind of nonsense you've concocted in that school of yours, but I assure you there's nothing going on. I have no intention to do anything untoward with any students. And yet, an incident can still occur even without a teacher having such intentions. Just like in Mr. Hirose's. Hirose, the art teacher Sakamoto told me about while I was investigating Slipmouth Kashima. Both Kashima and Manabe had a crush on him, which spiraled into tragic consequences. I have warned Doryu and Kinukawa not to get close to you, but seeing them defend you so fervently, the situation is getting dangerous. That's what my intuition as a woman is telling me. Let me repeat it again. This is all just a big misunderstanding on your part. I've warned you, Mr. Light. If you'll excuse me, then. Ouch. Sakamoto grimaces, pressing her fingers to her temple. Hey, you alright? Leave me be. I've been having terrible headaches since this morning. This is all your fault. Your... Mumbling invectives at me, Sakamoto hurriedly stumbles out of the faculty room. Jeez. A big sigh escapes my lips. There's nothing I can do about it. I have to investigate the departed. And sometimes the only way I can make progress is by gaining the students' cooperation. I shouldn't refrain from asking them. The school will be closing shortly. All students, please promptly vacate the school grounds for today. It's finally time for students to leave school. I head back to the infirmary and try to come up with some kind of strategy for tonight. So I actually was hoping I could look around. It's possible I may have just missed a lost soul, so, uh, yeah. Welcome back, Mr. Light. What are you doing here, Abe? School ended a while ago. You better go home now. Goodness, that is too much. I'm not asking for grand gesticulations of friendship, but it wouldn't hurt you to be a tad bit kinder, you know. After all, I have come all the way here to provide you with information regarding the departed. Come again? With the lack of a notice and no new pertinent information, I'm pretty desperate. Let's give him a listen for now. I'm listening. Tell me more. 
Before we get to the meat of my report, there's something I'd like to tell you. This will be my final act of assistance. I shall cease pursuing the departed after this. Oh, really? What's with the sudden decision? I saw something with my left eye. I witnessed my own tragic end assaulted by a terrifying demon with numerous legs. By demon with numerous legs, I assume he must be referring to some kind of bug. If you want to deride me for my cowardice, feel free to do so. But I won't die if I abandon my pursuit now. My master has also warned me to do so. I'm not going to laugh at you. You made a wise decision. However, it seems like you have not been afforded the same option. You cannot run from the departed any longer. So this is my parting gift to you as you take another step closer to death. The Departed, a name we learned through the notices. However, that sinister name has existed since long before we first heard of it. A hundred years ago before Konohihara Academy was even founded, a dark incident occurred on these lands. There was a small village called M-Town near Konohihara. At some point, residents of M-Town succumbed to an unknown disease one by one. In the end, the village was destroyed and the incident was forgotten. But one of the residents said this before they died. This is the departed's wrath. This is the most valuable information I've ever found. That's some interesting information. Where did you learn it? From the former headmaster. He liked to study the school's history during his spare time. When the first notice arrived, I went to him and asked if he knew something. So he told you about the departed's wrath. Yes, it sounded like a mere ghost story to him more than anything. He was a realist. He didn't believe in the departed. If I remember correctly, that headmaster died of a heart attack, didn't he? Yes, if he were still alive, you might have learned more valuable information from him. Right after the departed's nose first arrived, the only person who knew about their past died. Another convenient coincidence. Well, I shall be going home soon. To tell you the truth, I've been feeling under the weather. Perhaps I'm possessed. Now that I think about it, I've heard similar complaints from a lot of people today. It could just be an outbreak of some disease, but the events of last night suddenly crossed my mind. What if the Departed's transformation now gives them the ability to not only affect the school, but humans as well? Or am I overthinking things? Mr. Light? The gruesome death I saw with my left eye also applies to you. What awaits you is an inevitable catastrophe. I hate to see the Great Spirit Doctor lose his life this way. After just finally speaking those words, Abe leaves the room. Guess I'll take that as a sign that he's really worried about me. The sun sets and darkness falls on Konehara Academy. How many times have I greeted the night here? Why is the phone ringing now? Hello. Ah, it's me, Michio Kuni Kinukawa. Thank goodness you're still at the school. What's wrong? Um, just wanted to ask if you made any progress with your investigation. I'm curious. I'm in front of the school now. Mind coming out? I don't mind, but could we just talk over the phone? Oh, jeez, it's fine, isn't it? I'll be waiting, then. Sakamoto just gave me the warning today. Oh, well, I have no choice since I made a promise. Should I head to the main gate now? Okay, I took a small break to get a drink of water. I have a feeling they're not going to let me go to the other area, so I'm not even going to try. The lights in the hallway are glowing red. Given the lack of commotion right now, I'm guessing nobody's noticed yet. Oh well, it's pretty hard to miss, so someone's going to notice it sooner or later. So I'm going to leave the classrooms alone unless prompted. And there's a large bulletin board here. It's where the first note is posted. Notice your students are posted on the bulletin board. Club activities will be suspended, head home, classes end. Michio is waiting in front of the main gate. The moment she sees me, she rushes over like a puppy. 
Good evening, Mr. Light. You look tired today, too. Not surprised, though. How are you feeling? Same old, same old. Bit tired since I haven't been getting a lot of sleep lately. Never mind that. How's your investigation going? Do you learn any new facts? Not a lot, but... I tell her about the story of the Departed's Wrath that I heard from Abe. Wrath of the Departed? That sounds like something from a fantasy novel. Did the previous headmaster tell you anything? Nope, I wasn't particularly close to him. I'm student council vice president, but I usually just have Hime deal with the teachers. Okay. There's something that's caught my attention. I remember M-Town coming up in one of the cases somehow. Now that she mentions it, that name does sound somewhat familiar. In which case did M-Town show up? I believe that was the hospital for Kashima. I recall what happened when we were investigating Slipmouth Kashima. Actually, yeah, Kashima's the only one we actually left the school for fully. I feel like I saw the name during Slipmouth Kashima. Where did I see that name at M-Town? It's on the bus route. I try to remember what was written on the bus stop on the bus route map I saw. Binko, one of the bus stops I saw that time was M-Town Shop. I immediately let Michio know about it. You're right. You sure have a good memory. If the owner's a descendant of an M-Town resident, they might have some documents from the past. I'll try going to M-Town Shop. Sure, let's go there together. Wait a minute. You're coming with me? Of course I am. But don't you have a curfew? No need to worry, he may can handle it. Your manager trusts her, you know. That's not the issue, though. I don't want to leave you alone. Carrying these burdens all by yourself just seems really tough. Tough, huh? I guess it is. Mr. Konoe's ultimatum, Sakamoto's hostility, Abe's prediction of death. The Departed constantly targeting me, the students I couldn't protect, Daimon unconscious in a hospital bed. My heart is screaming from all the weight it's bearing, but I've chosen to close my ears and ignore it. I know I can't help carry all that heavy baggage, but... I can at least help you relax a bit. I'm begging you, I'm not asking for too much. And she joins the investigation again. Her kindness tastes, tastes as sweet as honey to my exhausted mind. Except, there's a chance she might be the departed. Michio and I climb into the car I parked near the school. M-Town Shop isn't too far from here. I park my car nearby and walk toward the bus stop in front of M-Town Shop. This shop is so creepy. The building is run down and there's no sign of life inside. It doesn't look like anyone actually lives here. We'll find out for sure once we check it out. A crooked guardrail on a slanted pole. Looking at the brake marks of the road, seems like there was a car accident here. Safe driving is important. You should take that to heart, Mr. Light. A vending machine with bottled water inside a rare scythe these days. Seems like it's no longer in use. This vending machine is kind of rare, isn't it? It's got bottles of water. Is that order? Jeez, what a shame. I wanted to buy one for nostalgia. Yes. There's a faded paper with the word morning on it pasted in the gl on the glass door. Isn't this a morning notice? I think they hang it on the house they're supposed to remove and they're supposed to remove it after forty nine days. You sure know a lot of strange things, huh? When my grandma died, one of my relatives told me about it. But does that mean someone here passed away sometime in the past seven weeks? I suppose it would imply that. Hmm. There's an old mailbox hanging on the wooden wall. When I appear inside, I find a postcard. wonder what it's the postcard of. Let's check it out. It's for investigation. Why are you being so casual about everything? Without responding, before I can tell her to stop, Michio's already got her hand on the mailbox lid. It's not opening. Is it locked? I don't see any keyhole, though. Yes. The other side of this dusty glass door is pitch black, preventing us from seeing inside the store from this vantage point. What's going on here? I hear an eerie male voice coming from inside the shop. 
So, real quick, she still only gets two decks off that. I don't really know, I haven't been paying attention to see if my stats have increased from the level ups or just my HP. It'd be counterproductive to take the bus since I came here by car. Hi, hi. Yoshi. Yoshi. Maybe I have to check it again. It appears disused. Hmm. So we got a different line that time. Hmm. Can't stop thinking about the voice I heard just now. I wonder who's inside. There's no bell anywhere around the store. We'll just have to knock on the door to see if there's someone inside. There's no response. Maybe they're asleep. Let's try it again. Still no response. Let's give it one last try. Third time's a charm, right? I especially hate that saying right now, but that's for personal reasons unrelated to the game. My head, my, my head, head. A scene suddenly flashes before my eyes, and that scene is... Of an elderly man lying on the ground, elderly man lying on the ground of an old store. His head is deformed and swollen to the point of becoming gelatinous. Swarms of centipedes continue to issue forth from his eyes. Bugs, bugs, bugs. This is... The Departed's Wrath. The moment he stops speaking, his body also stops twitching. All that moves in the dark now are the bugs. I wonder what caused this to happen. I can no longer hear any response coming from his gaping mouth. There is one thing that I'm dead certain about. He said this was the Departed's Wrath. What's wrong? I saw what happened. The owner of the shop, he was probably killed by the Departed's Wrath. I described the vision I just saw to Michiho. So the person that was being mourned was the old man you saw then? I guess so, yeah. But they had the mourning nose up, which means they had a funeral, and that means his corpse must have been found. That's odd, because the other victim's corpse has disappeared. How could that be? Didn't Kakuda's corpse remain too, though? Maybe there are times when they don't need to get rid of the corpse or something. I don't understand. This is just a guess, but the Departed wants to continue this whole little notice game. If there's actually a dead body found at the school, the police will come. There's a chance that the school will be closed and then there won't be any students, so maybe they only discard the corpses at school. But Bonnaby's body also disappeared and she didn't die at the school. That was probably because of you, though. With that corpse in the hospital, the cops probably would have arrested you, and that's not something the Departed wants. That actually makes sense since I'm supposed to be their husband. And this ends my sloppy deduction. Thank you for listening. Although she doesn't think too highly of her reasoning, I have to admit that it does make sense. This corpse was found outside the school and had no ties to me, therefore it remained. Why was he cursed, though? I'm not so sure, but... Maybe it's because he was a descendant of an M-Town resident. M-Town was destroyed by the Departed's wrath. While we don't know what exactly happened there, the wrath still remains, and it killed the old man. What was that sound? It came from the mailbox. Bleh. 
cool, cool. There's an old mailbox hanging on the one wall. When I appear inside, I find a postcard. It doesn't look any different. Maybe I was just hearing things. Just to be sure, I try and open the lid one more time. Unlike last time, it opens easily. How is this possible? Did something just happen to get caught and the mailbox refused to open? Or was there a trigger or something? Well, now that I'm gonna get an answer, time to see what was locked away. I collect the postcard. It's addressed to M Town Shop, though I have no idea who the sender is. The sender's previous the head the sender is the previous headmaster. I flip the card over and find some words of gratitude written on it. This is obviously some kind of thank you letter from the previous headmaster. Reading the letter more thoroughly, the shop owner apparently donated an old book about M Town's ritual to the school. An old book about M Town, huh? Interesting. It should be in Konohara Academy now. Probably in the library. Although, if they considered it to be a valuable item, they might have put it away somewhere else for safekeeping. We came this far, and that's where the trail leads, so why don't we go looking for it? Let's go back to Konohara Academy. So I just want to check everything. I leave M-Town Shop and get into the car I parked nearby. The trip back to Konohara Academy should only take about five minutes if we don't get caught in traffic. Through the, throughout the ride, Michio only stares blankly at the scenery outside. She was in such high spirits earlier, I wonder what's wrong. Say, Mr. Light? Do you have a moment? Michio calls out to me in a low, subdued voice, as if she were waiting for the right moment to spring something on me. I need your opinion on something. It's related to the departed. Mind if I talk about it? Sure, go ahead. It's about the departed's notices. Do you remember how many notices we've gotten? Including the one that arrived before I came to the school, there would be four. You're wrong, unfortunately. The correct answer is six. I try to recall the six notices. The first was targeting Ribbon, aka Kyoko Takai, who was the f set, and the second was targeting pianist Toshihiko Zumi. The third notice was from Naomi Horikishi, and the fourth was from Megumi Manabe, the gold prize. Fifth was for Doryu and Michiho, student council, and finally the hooligan Shinichi Kakuta. Huh. What about the notices? I want to know what the purpose was for issuing those notices. The Depart isn't a spirit who goes around committing horrible acts for fun. They issued those notices with a goal in mind. Ever since the model notice, they've been releasing those notices to test you, their husband. But what about the first two? Now that you got me all curious about it, too, do you have any ideas? Well, yeah, sorta. If they issued the latter notices as a trial for their husband, I'm guessing that also applied to the first two. So are you saying there was already a marriage candidate even before I arrived at the school? Yep. If I'm right, who do you think it was? The potential husband before me was. So, still alive? Not a chance in hell. Hmm. Why do you think that? He wasn't even at the school when the first notice arrived. Who do you think it was then? Izumi. Huh? Izumi was different from the other victims. Before he was murdered, he said the departed is calling me. I actually heard his last words. Seems like he knew the departed's true identity. Seriously? Who is it? Well, he didn't actually say. But if he really did learn the departed's true identity, he probably was being put on trial. So the first notice was really issued to test Izumi, huh? I guess he was deemed unfit since he abandoned Takai and ran away. Maybe that's why he became the second target. 
I should have become a Hara Academy at that time. I don't know what they saw in me, but they chose me as their next potential husband. And you didn't run away and actually accepted the challenge. You tried to save those spirit souls. That cool side of yours must have fit in with their image of an ideal husband. And that concludes Micho Kinukawa's deduction. Man, I sure have a good imagination, right? Maybe I can be a novelist or something. To be honest, I'm blown away by the story that Michio concocted for me. It was as if the departed themselves was telling me their plans. I would have never thought that you could piece together their train of thought so well. I'm surprised. Michio smiles, her fingers playing with her white hair. I suppose it's because that doll was cursed by the departed. Previously, she said the Depart. Well, she thought the Depart was that female doll. I guess she still stands by that opinion. Somehow, I can understand how they feel. Like when I was possessed by Kashima, the Depart has been longing for an ideal husband who, for who knows how long, and then they found you, Michiho. I love you. I want to vow to live happily ever after with you. Then I want to. Eat. You. Up. Just kidding. Come on now. Oh, don't be mad, please. I end up getting carried away when I start acting like the departed. How was it? Did I freak you out? Don't tease your teacher. Sorry. When I saw that gloomy face of yours, I just had an urge to tease you. We should be arriving at Konohara Academy soon. I open the window and let the cold night air in. I don't think I can bear this indescribable atmosphere. Whoa, why are the lights red? Oh, right. I didn't tell you about this. They've been like this since last night. I think the Departed did this, but I could be wrong. I see. Is this their way of trying to charm you? In what way, exactly? Let's see. The Departed thinks you're their ideal husband, right? They do, yeah. This is something I've seen on TV. In Shinto weddings, bonfires and paper lanterns are usually lit at night to illuminate the path of the newlyweds. I figure these lights are their version of that. They're really going all out to perfect every detail of their wedding, then. I mean, everything they do is pretty detailed. They issue fancy notices and even blend in with the people in the school. Bet they're having so much fun. I don't doubt that. Among spirits, there are some who feel their greatest pleasure when they're inflicting fear on humans. Supposedly an exquisite pleasure that humans cannot comprehend. The departed might be one of those spirits. It doesn't seem to be causing any harm, so we probably shouldn't pay much attention to it. Let's just ignore it for now. You're a strong one, aren't you? Shall we go to the library, then? Why don't you go back to the dorms? It's getting late. Don't wanna. Let me tag along until the end. I'm curious to know where this leads. But... How about I promise I'll go home once we find the old book? Just let me stay until then. What if I don't want to? Then I'll still tag along. Sheesh. I better find that old book as soon as possible so the scurvy breaking student will head home. The place, best place to find a book should be the library. So, will they let me explore? Cool. Notices for students are posted on the bulletin board. Club activity is halted, head home. Student council isn't even a club activity, but I've been told to go home early. Can't even finish my work because of that. He may have it the roughest, though. Hi, hi. Hmm, they let you jump. Nothing on the second or third floor, they say. Uh, I think that's the music room I really remember. We've got no business here. There are other places we need to inspect. Hmm. That's where the first notice was posted. 
I wouldn't have had the chance to meet you if it weren't for these for the notices. I want to thank the departed for that. It's rather inconsiderate to the victims when you say it like that. Oops, sorry. Don't worry, they had it coming. Hey, Mr. Light? How about you? Are you glad you were able to get to know me and Hime? I'm ecstatic. Both of you have helped me a, lo have helped me a lot. It makes me happy to hear that. I'm not used to being praised so directly like that. I'm feeling a bit embarrassed now. Here, a gift for you. It's a thank you for answering my question. Michio grabs my hand and gives me a small object. What? Why do you have this? You're gathering these things, aren't you? I picked it up on the way. For some reason, it was in the student council room. Oh, thank you. The night I saved the two of them, the clock tower went on about all kinds of things related to the case. I remember talking about the lost souls, too. What is that tooth, by the way? No idea. I only know this thing has some sort of hidden spiritual power. Maybe it's the departed's tooth? Probably. So I am a little worried that there might be, like, something in one of the locks that falls out when you jiggle the handle or something. I feel super relaxed when I come here. It's like I'm coming home. Shall we rest for a bit? I have some tea and sweets. We're in the middle of an investigation, you know. Mr. Light, having peace of mind is also important. Even the old folk legends say so. It depends on the situation. You need to respect the danger that we're in. Okay, I'll give it a try. There's no need to stay here any longer. There's no one in the faculty room. You're a teacher, but I barely see you in the faculty room. Now that you mention it... Do you feel uncomfortable there? Miss Sakamoto seems to really hate you. That's not the reason. Don't you think she's awful? You've been working so hard for the sake of the school. Should I throw lots of mole crickets into the faculty room to get revenge for you? Please don't do that. I'm begging you. There's no need to see her any longer. What's written in the book? I'm kind of scared, but I'm looking forward to it. Okay, the capture card crapped out here in the library. Um, we have reached the final stage, though, because, like I said, this is going to be a micro-chapter, so... Let's head back out and actually hit up the library now. And hope it can make this final stretch. This bookshelf is filled with all sorts of encyclopedias and pictorial books. This is... So the World Beetle Encyclopedia is back, huh? Now you can see as many beautiful beetles as you want. Michio takes out a book with a stern-looking beetle on the cover. Man, I really can't get enough of this. All of them are just so cute. Guess this is how men must feel when they look at gravier magazines. I don't know how to reply to that. Like, you see this elephant beetle is just adorable. Look at the silhouette in this corner. As me chose about to show a photo from the book, something falls out. I pick it up. It's an eerie tooth. Well, we got the level up. Why is that here? And it came from an insect encyclopedia of all things. Are they challenging me? Don't ask me. The strangest part about all of it is that insects are invertebrates, so they shouldn't have bones, you know? Books about plants are arranged on this shelf. Well, there are some who are interested in plants, but not me. I only see plants as bug food. Hmm. This is the library's checkout counter. There's nothing particularly unusual about it. I've been checking out books related to insects. I recommend World's Weirdest Insects. Sounds like one of those uh, TV specials they used to show like in the 90s and stuff. World's Blankiest Blank. Mm -hmm. 
There's a wooden box storage can with a glass door. It seems to store special books that aren't allowed to leave the school premises. Since old books are considered valuable items, it should be somewhere around here. Michio and I split up to check each book storage section. H City's local department documents and old maps are stored together in the school newspaper folder. I skim the documents, hoping to find anything related to the departed to no avail. Can't seem to find anything that looks like an old book either. Hey, Mr. Light. This book has some information about M Town. Michio shows me a book titled H City's Local History, which was self published by the previous headmaster. Issued a year ago, this book was apparently only given to family and close friends. Thinking it might be connected to the case, I write down the bits about M Town in my notes. Konohihara used to be a small town named M. The area where Konohihara Academy currently sits was once M Town's downtown. M Town had its own beliefs and customs, though they were gradually disappeared following the westernization that occurred during the Meiji period. Furthermore, the plague that occurred at the end of the Meiji era caused a sharp decrease in its population. The survivors all called it the Departed's Wrath, but autopsies determined to be cholera. It's still unknown what the Departed refers to, though some speculate it may be tied to their local folklore. M-Town's religion. Two earthly deities were enshrined in M-Town. One of them was Mushigami. Details regarding this deity are hazy as there are not many traces of M-Town's customs. Though it does beg the question, do these people really make an insect their god? Because I think Mushi is like a fly, or I don't know if it's maybe just a generic bug. But it does have like an insect piece, like a origin, root, I don't know what you want to call it. Mushigami Shrine was said to be located in the vicinity of Konohara Academy's old building. Because the shrine was already half ruined when the school was founded, they demolished it to build the old building. When the first headmaster, Genzo Konoe, had the shrine demolished, he tried to placate Mushigami and the souls of those who died of the plague. This is how the shrine in the connecting corridor came to be. Both students and teachers might have called it Kokuri Shrine, but that's actually incorrect. It was simply named after the guardian fox of the Mush Mushigami Shrine, which is now staying in the courtyard. Lord Mushigami, huh? What a beautiful name! I want to know their connection to the departed. How should I put this? There are many scary stories where gods punish humans for destroying their shrines. The departed's wrath began before the shrine was destroyed, though. True, but I don't think those things are completely unrelated. Because those who knew about the wrath died one after the other. You see the picture of the talisman over here? I think they had good taste for choosing centipedes, don't you think so too? Is the theme Scolopendra subspinipes? I don't know how you pronounce that one. Michiko points out a photo on the edge of a page about the local history. It's an old talisman with a centipede drawn on it. Looking at the details, this talisman was made at Mushigami Shrine. Apparently, the previous headmaster got his hands on it. In M-Town, people believe they could escape danger by putting this talisman on the front of their houses. Why do I feel like I've seen this talisman somewhere before? Where was it? That's right. The shrine on the second floor. There are talismans hanging there. But all we found inside the shrine was the Petri dish. There wasn't any information related to M-Town. That's also where the second lost soul of the chapter was, by the way. According to the book, that shrine was built to replace M-Town's Mushigami Shrine. So what are disaster prevention talismans doing hanging in a shrine that's been around for so long? Were they that afraid of the Mr. Kokiri rumors or something? I just remembered. I saw that talisman before. Michio, who is peering at the book beside me, speaks up. The shrine in the connecting corridor, right? To my surprise, she shook her head in disagreement. Where did you see it, then? Over there. I was completely confused at the time, but I saw that talisman with my own eyes. A place where she was completely confused. Don't tell me she saw that talisman at. So, if you remember, at S Cemetery, she got possessed. I was definitely confused when I heard Kashima's voice, but that isn't the, main pl the place I was talking about. It's the clock tower. When both Hime and I were on the ground, I saw that talisman. Why don't we go inspect the clock tower? It's locked, though. It was open that time, no? I mean, it's already nighttime, so who knows? Maybe it's open again. It might be indeed. 
It doesn't make any logical sense, but I'm still willing to believe that slim chance. Let's go to the clock tower. I wonder if we can get into the old building. I'm getting a call. Hello? What's up, He-Man? I'm helping Mr. Light right now. We're gonna go to the clock tower. Don't worry about me, I'm fine. Mr. Light is here with me, so we'll be fine even if the departed shows up. Don't be mad, He-Man. I promise I'll be home in 30 minutes. Cover for me in the meantime. Hime is mad. I mean, she's always kind of irritated by my actions, but she usually doesn't scold me. She's worried about you. I guess so, but I bet she's also worried about you, too. She likes you, you know. Enough with that nonsense, please. No, I have proof, all right. Hime's always been well-behaved, but she's totally ignored all Miss Sakamoto's warnings. You know why? Because she's really given her all for you. You think so? Absolutely. Please treat her well. So we need to go to the courtyard. Mm -hmm. A massive statue of the Guardian Fox stands here. It's darker, which gives one the impression that it's been here for quite some time. Now that I think about it, what was the voice I heard before? What's wrong, Mr. Light? You look troubled. Actually, I talk about the strange voice I heard when I prayed for the girl's safety. So you prayed for He-Man, I... Thank you. She flashes a grin at me. I'm tickled. Do you think that voice might be the voice of Inari? Maybe they think you're a teacher who deeply cares for his students, so they're granting you your wish. The voice sounded way too ominous for that, though. But I did obtain a lost soul that should help me with the investigation. Can't help but think that was Inari helping me out. It's intriguing for some reason. Alright, let's give it a try. Try what? Try thinking about me and make another wish. Who knows, maybe you'll hear something. Why don't you give it a try? Sure, let's give it a try. Nice, I love an inquisitive teacher. Close your eyes, concentrate, and make a wish. I close my eyes as Michio said. I clasp my hands and make a wish in my mind. I hope Michio and Doryu will always be safe. All of a sudden, I hear the sound of something. That was... Mr. Light, it fell from the fox! Michio gives me an item. It's an eerie tooth. It really worked? Yeah. I didn't hear any voice, though. I wonder why. Okay, we just got the tooth. Now we can try getting into the old school building. I doubt the old literature I'm looking for would be stored in the old building. Let's look somewhere else first. So he's not ruling it out. That's the important thing. By the way, you can go back and grab a bag upgrade if you want. It's kind of up to you. I just... I don't care. Let's look for old literature at the school. Once again, I arrive at this place. I recall the story I heard from Doryu this evening. During summer break, Doryu and Michio discovered the doll the first headmaster put in here. Is it here? So I ask, swallowing down my saliva. My mind is screaming that I'm in grave danger and should not take one step closer. That bell again. Michio doesn't seem to hear it. I really am the only one who can hear it. The bell stops ringing. What's wrong? Nothing. Let's go. It's open. How? This is our chance. Let's use this chance to solve the mystery of the clock tower. Yeah, sure.
I step into the clock tower. The unpleasant smell of dampness and mold hits my nostrils immediately. Wait outside, Michio. I'm coming with you. I'm not scared at all. No, I want you to keep an eye on the door. If I get locked up in if I get locked in up here, things will get really bad. Oh, okay. I'll keep the exit safe for you. Be careful. So we lost Michio. Michio leaves the clock tower. An old western style ken with several talismans pasted on it. What do you know, Michio is telling the truth. Let's take a closer look. There's a drawing of a centipede on the talisman, just like in the photo from the book. These talismans seem to be sealing something sinister inside. However, a plank is preventing me from opening the door. I need to get rid of it first. Hmm. A mannequin without limbs. Has it always been clothed? So out of curiosity, I literally have no items. Nothing there. A dusty stone floor. Now that I look closer, I can see something resembling a tooth stuck in the gutter. My finger should be able to fit in. Should I pick it out? I wedge my finger in and try to fish the item out. However, the tooth doesn't budge at all. I should be able to get it if I widen the gap a little. If I wedge the gap open with something hard, then... Okay, that's the exact same. Kill. <laughs> Who was that? I blurt out the question. But there's no reply. The silent darkness is the only thing accompanying me in here. Hmm. There's a large wooden box against the wall. I peer inside to find a crowbar and a wrench. I can use these to get rid of the plank. So there you go, boys. We got the master key. Hang on. I notice something look around the room. I don't see any more stairs to climb. This is the top floor. But there's no altar anywhere. The female doll was placed on an altar. That's what Doryu told me. The same story was in the school newspaper. So why isn't there an altar anywhere in here? So now we need to go get that tooth. <laughs> Kill. Kill, 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 kill. Shut up! Despite my pleading yells for the unknown entity to stop their oral torture, the voice continues on. Feels like there are insects crawling inside my head as it drones on and on. Kill, you said. What? What do you want me to kill? Okay, I pushed the wrong button there. Two doesn't budge at all. Take aim, swing down. The gap's widening. The tooth is free. I pick it up. It's an eerie tooth. So we get Abe's notes. And with that, I think we actually have all the notes. Okay, capture card crapped out again. I think I kind of jinxed myself when I wished for that upon leaving the infirmary. so we can't leave. For some reason, the door refuses to open. 
A can with talismans pasted on it, with a plank nailed over the door. I used the crowbar to remove the plank before getting rid of the talismans. Then I opened the door. There's an old book inside. M-Town's private records is written on the cover. Is this the old book we're searching for? This is written in a peculiar ancient script. It'll take me some time to decipher the content. Shit, my headache is getting worse. But I have to read this. This must be where the departed secret... What is happening? Suddenly the letters turn red. Red. Bright red. I can't read the book like this. Tell me, what's written here? Kill. Do you want me to kill someone that badly? But who? <laughs> Dear husband. Are you the departed? Did you eat cookery? This is neither a dream nor a hallucination. The departed really has transformed. Dear husband, what are you going to do this time? Where's Michio, by the way? Thank you for the food. Don't tell me you ate Michiho? Kill. Kill who? You've killed so many people already. What the hell do you want me to kill? The Departed is clearly a monster. I don't want to get close to it. What should I do? I try throwing the wrench near the Departed's feet. Did I manage to intimidate them? The wrench hit the Departed's feet instead of hitting the floor near their feet. Something about the Departed's scream earlier seems strange to me. Looks like the attack is working. I want to believe I made the right choice. To your husband. To your husband. Kill. Did they just say kill? They keep whispering the same word over and over. Are they telling me to kill the Departed or what? Does the Departed want me to kill them? Yes. But this just doesn't feel right. For now I should... I try defending myself with a crowbar. I strengthen my defense as I watch the Departed warily. But then the Departed moans and they sound rather mournful. Why would they do that? Are things not going as they expected? Did I make the right choice? What are you gonna do to me, you bastard? <laughs> that eerie voice has sent the world creating on its side. I'm so dizzy I can't even tell if I'm still standing. is killing me. Darkness shrouds my vision. 
All I can hear are the departed's murmurs. If you want me to kill so badly, I feel this indescribable, overwhelming urge to kill. My consciousness is fading. Why... Why is she... on the floor. Bugs, there's a large swarm of bugs. The bloody body is covered in bugs. <laughs> you heard my wish, dear husband. You killed she who was close to you. Thank you, dear husband. Don't tell me I... I was controlled by the departed. Then I... I flee from the clock tower. I roam about aimlessly with the crowbar in hand. I was being controlled and attacked the spirit in front of me. But it wasn't a spirit, it was Michiho, even though my eyes saw the departed. <laughs> Mr. Light? What's going on? What are you doing with that bloody crowbar? Dorio, wh why are you here? I was worried since Michio hasn't come home yet. Where is she? What happened, Mr. Light? At the clock tower, I was controlled by the departed. I attacked her with this crowbar. Huh? No way. I'm gonna go check. Doryu rushes over to the clock tower. Even knowing the departed might still be in there, I can't stop her from rushing inside. She returns after a while. She looks as emotionless as a wax statue. But her eyes are red and swollen. I saw her. She just stares at me, shell-shocked. She doesn't even cry or lash out at me. Her mind can't even process what she should do. Mr. Light? What are you going to do now? No, it's too late. She's not breathing. She has no pulse. I don't think they'll believe you if you tell them you were being controlled by the Departed. They'll arrest you, and if that happens, you won't be able to pursue the Departed anymore. I understand why you'd want to contact the Headmaster, but... Given the situation, I don't know if he'd be willing to help you. Dorio, what do you want me to do? Huh? Can I ask you to decide for me, please? It's a cowardly move, I know. But I also fear my own judgment now. What if I'm still under the Departed's control? Mr. Light? Got it. After a long silence, Dorio nods her, nods her head. She opens her mouth again right after. Follow me, Mr. Light. Once Doryu has settled on a course of action, she quickly regains her composure. I'm still stunned, but she immediately grabs my hand and drags me out of Konoehara Academy. Can you drive? Yeah. We better head to your home first and come up with a plan there. <laughs> Dorio. 
Doryu takes the passenger seat as I drive my car back to Kujo Mansion. During the ride, I tell her about what happened earlier. Even though I struggle to find the words and need to pause several times, Doryu pushes me and I manage to go through my recap. Once we arrive at the mansion, I take off my sweat-soaked shirt and take a hot shower. Or in Doryu's words, I warm up my body and calm my mind down. Her firm attitude and language remind me of my late sister. My sister often tried to whip me into shape and scolded me for being lazy. I put on a new shirt and slacks. I may have washed off the blood, but there's no way to cleanse the bloody truth. I'm coming in. You look much better now. Yeah, thanks to your help. Oh, please. Why are you helping me? I was being controlled, but it doesn't change the fact that I killed... Can you please stop? I know you didn't do it of your own will. Weren't you fighting the departed? That's what I thought. But it turned out it wasn't the departed. Mr. Light? If you truly care for Michiho, then please, Avenger. That's what I wish, and I'm sure Michiho would feel the same. I want to do that, but... There's a corpse in the clock tower. If someone discovers it, then I... It'll be fine. It's on school grounds, and if the departed is involved, her corpse should disappear. She might be right. The departed probably doesn't want me to be arrested and barred from school grounds. They're as kind as a human. Everything that's happened so far is probably all part of their master plan. As long as both of us keep this quiet, you won't be suspected of murder. So you're saying you want us to continue with the investigation while keeping Michio's death a secret? Exactly. I'll never forgive you if say you want to run from the departed now. Though Ryu levels a determined gaze at me, I can see black flames burning in her eyes. She's really pissed off at the departed. Maybe granting the wishes of the girl whose best friend I accidentally killed is the best way for me to atone for my actions. I'm begging you. Please, hunt down the departed. Thank you. Let me help you out. Please, avenge Michiho. Doryu falls into my arms. Michiho. Why? Why? Doryu sobs deeply into my chest. This must have broken her. A girl who lost her best friend and now feels like she's been left all alone in this world. This wound will never heal. If there's one reason I'm still on this earth, it must be that I'm intended to bring an end to this cursed case and bring her some relief. And that's your end of chapter 6.